Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 23. Nasdaq is up 31. S&P is a flat. Let's go inside that Dow and see uh, what is the strength versus the weakness inside here. Put this baby up. Point-wise, what we have is that, uh, oh, yep, it's Boeing. Boeing's putting 30 negative points. Caterpillar, 9. Dow to Pont, 9. Not that bad. Apple's putting 11 positive points. Uh, you got 3M putting 9. Big Mac is putting 8. And let's go over to Deer, Tom, and see what uh, they have to say. They, there's no doubt this is, uh, you know, it's down 8 bucks. Yeah, off the lows, but they had a little bit of negative action this morning on their earnings, that's for sure. Yeah, so let's see what that, let's see. So the headlines is, uh, Deer Outlook disappoints as trade war keeps farmers frugal. Can't blame them, man. Yeah. Let's see, sales of agricultural turf equipment forecast to fall 5 to 10 percent. Let's see. Deer delivered a more cautious outlook than expected for a year ahead as uh, simmering U.S. trade tensions um, and growing and difficult growing conditions keep North America farmers from replacing large equipment. Demand for machinery has taken a back seat as trade concerns have uh, farmers worried about who will buy their products. Man, it's got to be pretty intense to be in a farmer right now, man. You know? Oh, man, it's not much tougher that you can be going through, I imagine, from what I continually hear um, what they're dealing with out there, yeah. Seriously, man. Uh, okay, so uh, given their first guidance for fiscal 2020, the newly appointed uh, chief is got yeah. executive office, John May, projected net income in the range of $2.7 billion to $3.1 and that compares with the 3.46. So that's that's quite a. That's staggering, right? I that, was waiting again. I mean, that's just they yeah. might have income of 2.7 billion, and they were going to have maybe 3.5. That's 800 million dollars to the bottom line that just might go poof. Yeah. So that's that's serious business. Yeah, man. and that's keeping in mind that that was the average analyst estimate, which already factored in some struggles. Yes. You know. Right. So it's yeah. Wow. Let's see. Uh, fiscal fourth quarter, the top tractor maker reported better than expected sales and earnings that were broadly in line with estimates. Um, there, let's look at the positive. There are positives. The deal between the U.S. and China could provide stimulus. Well, guess what? You're waiting on that, man. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I. If you were a farmer, just pitch this hook. If you're a farmer, and a deal comes down, and you have to depend on that deal staying in place, would you go spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars on equipment? That's right. That's pretty. No, it's a great point. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's uncertainty is, is at, as I mean, it's just everywhere. So yeah, no doubt. So that's the deal. Let's go over to Caterpillar and see what that's doing to Caterpillar. Yep. Hitting Caterpillar a little bit this morning, yeah. as you might expect. Right. Not as bad though. Interesting. Right. No, you know, no. Yeah. And I think they're both, you know, they, they got, of course, the farming equipment, but they're both into mining equipment big time, too, I believe. Let's see. So under the description of Caterpillar, you got construction, mining, forestry. Let's go the, into deer and see. Maybe deer is just a bigger agricultural deal. I see. So that's interesting. They, they, they're into construction and forestry also, but agriculture is the, number, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So if I put the revenue, if yeah, you break it down. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Right. Okay, so this is cool. They do break it down. So deer, revenue-wise, agricultural and turf, 23.7 billion, construction, 11 billion. Okay. Now let's do Caterpillar. So we've got to remember those numbers. What, 20, yep, 20, 23 and 11. 11, okay, cool. And then inside Caterpillar. Let's see if they even break it down for us, right? Sometimes they, sometimes yeah, they hide the sauce. They do. They do, so, and there you go. Yeah, machinery, energy, transportation, 51 billion. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little different mix. Yeah. Hey, how about oil if we could jump over? Yes. So we, we just had those crude numbers come out. Quite a miss, man. We were looking for, we talked about it yesterday on the show, the estimate was looking for the an EIA inventory decline of about 800,000 barrels, and it looks like we still got plenty of oil, man. That number coming in at 1.5 million barrels on crude. And uh, I'm pulling up the chart. We initially got a little bit of a thrust downward. I got the chart up there. We spiked to 58.16, but oil right back to where we were, man. $58.37. We didn't miss a beat, and we're actually trading higher 
on that number right now. Wow. Um, pretty remarkable. And, you know, the remarkable run we had last night, man, you look at that high we had at 650. I call it last night, 650 a.m. this morning. We're up at $58.66. And uh, boy, oh boy, crude catching a bid right now at 58.49. Um, as it looks like uh, even a surplus, an unexpected surplus on that EIA number can't hold it down. That's pretty wild. And it you, is. You, what you're doing here, folks, okay, which is going to be interesting here, is that you're going right, you know, we've been up here a few times, and 58.74 is the number that it's trying to break through right now. Um, look at well, these. We might get there by the end of the oh, yeah. segment, but, let alone show. <laughs> no, no, totally, totally. I can see that. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, talk about a trend of higher highs and low and higher lows, right? I mean, that yes. trend is just, uh, poof, it's pretty clear. Now let's put that on a yearly. Well, I, I actually, I got to do a CL. CL1? Yeah. There we go. And we got the gas inventory up there as well. Plenty of gas. 4.3 million barrels of gas inventory. Um Oh, no, excuse me. That's the API. Gas came in at 5.1, and the estimate was only an increase of 800,000. So plenty of gas as well coming into Thanksgiving. Yeah, you can see you know, they have this long-term chart up now of oil. I and mean, we've been here for quite some time. I mean, this thing backed down, in like the well, actually a year ago. That's, that's when it yeah. backed down. Uh, look at that. So in September, last September, folks, you're at $76. And... In the middle of December, we were at 42. Yeah, that was a crazy run. Yeah. And that's, that's, of course, the market, it took the market down simultaneously. That's in the market itself also. Went oh, yeah, for I mean, sure. That, you, you look at that December uh, low, some of those big bars, that's when the market, right. good, old, good old Christmas Eve was Scrooge on Christmas Eve, coming, <laughs> coming for all the cash. Coming for all the cash on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and he got it. And he just oh, had man. to give it back the next... Uh, that's right. They start giving it back the next week, though, right? Seriously. Yeah, no doubt. So if we go overseas and take a look at overseas, folks, uh, last night, you have, um, you know, Europe is uh, basically uh, up slightly this morning. Um, Asia was mixed last night. You know, Hong Kong still, uh, Hang Seng still can't move. Um, so there's not a lot, a lot of movement over there. And what does happen, even though that they are not opened, uh, we are not opened, there's not really a lot of action even the next couple of days. It, it's it always sure. intriguing to me that if our markets are closed, their markets are open, but they're a lot slower, yeah. you know? It would make sense. We're the biggest uh, economy in the world. Right. Man. So we shut down, you know, you take out all that GDP, you take out all the workers, we're eating some turkey, we're eating some stuffing. And um, even we're closed on Friday, one of the only days really that we're closed when yes. the market is open. Stock market open for a half day on Friday, but really, I mean, the, if if they didn't have the regulations, I think that say that the stock market can't be closed for four straight days, they have to sneak in a half day open there just for you know price discovery to make sure that things aren't closed for too long. But very few traders in the office for Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's quite a rule, huh? That's, that's it pretty, should be because yeah. bad things can happen. You start closing the market for four or five days when you reopen. You know, a lot can happen over that time. You yeah. want to make Mark to market on a consistent basis. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Tommy and I are coming back. We got our man, Mr. Teddy Kingstad. We're going to be talking currencies. Come right back.